Hey, awesome family. Well, um, talo for lava, talo hani. Uh, great to see you guys again. We're back to our Fresh Truth uh, short Bible studies here. We've got our brother Tony. Uh, he's going to be sharing some thoughts on some of the questions uh, that I'm going to ask. What's up, Tony? Hey, what's up? Cool. Well, that was a very exciting what's up here. <laughs> you know, sort of the joy of the Lord. Is okay, so family, the questions that we're going to ask today um, in this short Bible study is around church. Uh, tithing and money in general. So um, if you uh, are interested in these topics, um, check these out. So question, first question, Tony, is what does the Bible say a church is? Uh, well, there's, there's two views on that, or two proper views. One is the local church, which may consist of believers and non-believers. And then there's what we would call the universal church or the invisible church or the body of Christ, which only consists of true believers. And those true believers are people that have been... They're born again, regenerated by the power of the Holy Spirit. Awesome. So that was in our first video. So if you want to check that out, go back to our first video on our Fresh True Short Bible Studies. So Tony, next question about church. Does it matter what church I go to? I think it does matter. If you're a, a believer, a true believer then you should be in a church that teaches the Bible, uh, proper doctrine and proper theology, uh, one that would help you to grow because the purpose of the church is to, for, to edify the body. And so we teach from the scripture, but if you're going to a place where you're not being edified, you're not being built up in the word of God, then it's probably not a good place to be. And so if I'm sitting inside a church that is not teaching a uh, uh, good biblical teachings and, and biblical truths, what's your advice? My advice would be to find one that does. Do you, could you recommend, would you, um, do you know that there are good solid churches out there for us to attend to? Yeah, there are good solid churches. There are good solid house churches as well. Um, and I think we had to try to make a list one time and there weren't that many, but there are, there are churches out there. And yet the list that Tony was talking about, we wrote down a list of um, Bible-believing Christ-centered churches, and so, uh, but in South Auckland, because that's where we're from. Uh, and so if you want that list, um, uh, then uh, you, we can send it to you. And if you want to put your church on that <laughs> list, then uh, give us your statement of faith and we'll have a bit of a look and a dive. So this is some really cool stuff, Tony, about church. I've met a lot of people recently who don't even bother going to church. They mm -hmm. say that they're born-again believers. They say that they're Christians. Um, should I even go to church? Absolutely. It's an ordinance in the scriptures that we should not abandon the gathering of the brethren. So that means that we should belong to a local church and be under the authority of the elders of that church. And so, Tony, one of the things that we've talked a lot about in our Fresh Truth podcast is around that uh, verse, Acts 17, verse 11. Mm. Hey, and, and we encourage you to go back and read that passage because it talks about these Berean believers. Do you want to just uh, quickly touch on, on how important it is for us to test the things that we're hearing mm. from um, our, the pastors from the pulpit? Mm. Well, that's Acts 17, 11 where the Bereans heard what Paul was saying and they received it, but they went away and tested it against the word of God. And that's important for us as a lesson for us that we don't just receive what we're listening to, mm. but we go away and we test it to see where, whether it's biblical, whether it aligns with scripture. The problem is um, most believers become lazy. And so they just hear and receive and they don't, they don't test it. So they don't, don't really know whether it's biblical or whether it aligns with the Bible. I think Pastor Cliff talked about that idea of spoon-fed Christians. Mm. Hey, they're sort of just yeah. getting whatever they can from the pastor, but throughout the rest of the week, right. they're not actually going back to the Word of God for mm. themselves. Tony, um, uh, just a couple of specific questions around tithing and money, because people have asked us uh, uh, to raise some of these questions. Mm -hmm. So, Tony, biblically, what is tithing? Uh, tithing just means a tenth, and it was part of the Mosaic Law in the Old Testament, but in the New Testament, you cannot find any verse where there's a command or an ordinance for us to tithe. To give a tenth. To give a tenth. Okay. Now, there is, um, we show, we, believers are encouraged to give and to give uh, generously. The word in, in, the, in the Greek, I believe, is hilaros, yeah. which means to give hilariously. That's right. You should be absolutely happy to give um, because that God loves a cheerful giver. Um, but if you give grudgingly, then you may not receive a blessing from it, but the money will still be used for the Lord's work. So if I'm sitting there in a church and I'm listening to you, and my church is all about tithing, mm. and is, is, is it unbiblical for me to tithe in a church? It is unbiblical. 
Because remember, the tithe was part of the Mosaic law, which came to end when Jesus died on the cross. And so we don't live, we, well, as Gentiles, we never lived according to the Mosaic law. It was never given to us. It was given to Israel and the Jewish people. But um, once he died, that rule of law of how we should live and tithe mm. uh, was done away with. So now we live under the law of Christ. And in the law of Christ, we give free will offerings. We give generously. We don't give a tenth. Um, because the truth is the tithe is more than a tenth. And it was right. agricultural. In the Old Testament, the tithe was not only a tenth of what you pr- produced, but then there's also another tenth on top of that, which was supposed to be... Um, kept for the running of the feasts mm. and then there's another tenth every third year which was f- to be put aside for the poor so in total every year you would probably be giving 21 to 22 percent okay and so um if i'm sitting there listening and i am a tither um and you're challenging me and saying this is unbiblical mm. um how do i how do I deal with that? And how do I discuss with my church leaders about this idea of tithing? Um, yeah, that's that's up to the person with her and his relationship with their pastors. Uh, most churches today use the, use the tithe to pay for everything that they have. Um, it's still unbiblical. And if a person's sitting there and he's tithing, the thing you should do is then stop tithing but then give generously according to how God has prospered you. Um, and the first thing the Bible teaches is that you should look after your needs. Mm. You know, Make sure your kids don't go without, make sure your bills are paid. And then after that, give according to what you want to give. You know, Don't give grudgingly, but give generously, cheerfully, happily. And that's a challenge for many of our Polynesian people as well, where yeah. we're, we're giving to the point of hurting, right? Hey, we're, we're going we're, broke. We're, go, we're going, going to finance debt. companies. Mm. We're going into debt to, to, in order to um, pay for or give in mm. terms of churches. And I guess, um, again, that's a big challenge um, if you're listening there. Um, your, your challenge is to, is to give cheerfully or hilariously, but to not use this tithing model that, that, that is... Uh, really popular in our churches today, right? That's right. And also, I think one of some churches read out the amount you give. And I think that that is also unbiblical. The Bible teaches us that we should give in secret. Mm. Um, and so what that causes is that it causes some sort of a competitive edge to giving and also causes a shameful if you're not giving enough, right. which is not really encouraging the believers in your congregation. Mm. And that wasn't done biblically too, eh? They no, weren't it's, it's reading out how much, because if it was, then Canaan would be top of the list yeah. and I'd be at the bottom. But it wasn't biblical where they were reading out how much money or offering someone no, gave, it's right? it's not biblical. It's not done in the Bible. And the te- Bible teaches that we should give in secret. Mm. That's why um, the keokusi or the envelope is a biblical way of giving, so no one knows what you've given. Yeah, that's right. But then... It's also read out loud. Also, that's a well, different that's only, challenge. Yeah, that's that's yeah. not a biblical thing to read it out. I think it shames some families who can't afford it, mm. and then they may have to go into debt to try and lift their giving. So, um, yeah, it's totally not biblical. Mm. Well, family, you've sort of heard um, from Brother Tony again about um, this idea of a church. What does the Bible say the church is? Um, and, and, and this really... Um, fascinating but also challenging topic around tithing and money if you have questions if you want to discuss this more uh, remember all hate mail goes to Canaan but if you want (laughs) to really and let's have a biblical discussion we're not going to argue this around your church tradition as such but what does the Bible say about these things as brother Tony said um, in the New Testament there is no clear amount given about how much you should give but the, 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 the New Testament standard for us is to give cheerfully, to mm. give hilariously, uh, to give in secret for the work of the Lord. Um, and so, again, we hope, ask us questions, send us some comments, send us some private messages, and we'd be happy uh, to engage you with this to the glory of God alone. Amen.